if you have to explain next time make it and you want to make it sound a bit more like it's, yes you it's made it sound so really delicious different. like i have no idea what you yes, said yes. but it's delicious <laughs> it That's sounds better so than cream and biscuits yeah no yeah no, yes. no, for sure <laughs> Today we have a very special guest. Yes, mean. Continue with your intro. Yes. <laughs> Anna. Anna. Um, she is from Macau and she's currently in London, mastering the Macanese cuisine. And I, we have a lot of questions because you know we're always trying to shine light on Macau, Macau talents, and anything related to Macau. We're always sharing. So um, we could start with you. Why don't you tell us about yourself? um just like what you do and also to our followers sure. tell us your ethnicity and things like that okay so i'm anna i was born and raised in macau um I'm, actually let me just tell you so i'm 34 going on to 35 years old this year i'm very old um <laughs> I, was, I was born in macau and i moved to london oh okay. yeah i thought you were younger than us honestly yeah <laughs> So oh, I'm very flattered, but no. <laughs> um, I moved to London when I was 18, going on to 19 for university. Um, so, uh, yeah, a, a, a big part of my life, half of my more than half of my, my life was in Macau. And I love Macau, but also it's like a, a little bit of a love-hate relationship, you know. Um, my ethnicity, I am half Portuguese and half Chinese. Ooh. So... <laughs> um, I live exotic. in London and I'm currently a recipe um, writer, pop-up chef, full-time mum and content creator, I guess. Yeah. That's so <laughs> awesome. Yeah, yeah, I saw you had a little baby uh, a while yeah. ago. So that's cute. She's, um, oh, she's, go- she's gorgeous. She's um, just over a year, one year, well, 14 months in mum talk. <laughs> thanks for um, translating yeah. yeah um and she um hopefully well we we're trying to teach her portuguese cantonese and english well and english she'll know but portuguese and cantonese as well on the side mm-hmm. so hopefully it's something sticks so <laughs> yeah, you yes. speak fluent cantonese yeah so ah. my mum is well, my mum, she's like full on Chinese from mainland China. Um, okay. She moved to Macau eventually to get a better life. And then she met my Portuguese dad. And I don't know if you, well, you probably know this expression, but it's like, because <laughs> they couldn't speak. Yeah, yeah they, they couldn't, you know, other. one didn't speak, in, they didn't speak English. Um, my dad didn't speak Cantonese and my mom didn't speak Portuguese. So my mom How? Had to, How then? Um, yeah, she she um she went on to the night school to learn Portuguese. Yeah. Oh, that's so romantic. I learned I know, language right. for you. Yes. Yeah, I'm going to speak funny. Portuguese. And so she speaks fluently with an accent, but she speaks fluent uh, Portuguese, yeah. So you're then you're fluent in Portuguese and Cantonese. Yes, yeah. So oh. I went to, um, well, uh, I, well, first first primary school was Liceo, which then closed and then I went to Florida for Liceo, a year. And I don't think to... I've heard of that. Is it the pink school beside Liceo you know was how... the old the, the old Polytechnic. Oh, the... So oh. before it was Polytechnic, it was a school, a proper school from like oh. a primary to secondary. Oh interesting. Um, and then okay. they closed down we moved to Florida for a year, mm-hmm. and then after that, um, that in uh, 2000, we went to um, Schola Portuguesa, IBM. Ah, okay. Yeah. IBM, Schola Portuguesa. <laughs> the Portuguese school of Macau, people, all right? EPM. Yes, yeah. exactly. IBM, uh... yeah. Um, yeah, I know, all right? So, I mean, I guess you mentioned, like, it's a love-hate thing with Macau. Like, I guess on, yeah. on that, like, tell us how was it growing up, why it's a love-hate, what's your, like, I guess, yeah. Um, so growing up in Macau, um, I feel like because it was so small, mm. and it's still small, and there was not much to do, um, everywhere else we went to, like Hong Kong, mm. 
even China, like, and then holidays to Portugal, every, like everywhere else seemed better than Macau because it was just, I think, yeah, there was, and I guess when you're a kid, Tiny. there's not yeah. much you can do anyway because you're like sure. dependent on your parents, yeah. right? So ha like I see Macau as I obviously I love, I love the people, I love the food, mm -hmm. but has this, has a, has a city, I'm like, Oh, it's so well back in the day I feel like it's a lot it was a lot better and then now like obviously with the casinos is a bit it's, it's like <laughs> a tourist. bit too much but it's <laughs> yeah it's a bit like just you know be like mm -hmm. I, I, I went to Vegas a few years ago and I feel like Macau is worse than is worse than Vegas but in the sense <laughs> of like just never stops just like mm -hmm. tch, tch, like like casino tch, money it money is, money it and is you're definitely like, oh, for people who love the city yeah yes city yeah, life i feel like with age i kind of like i just want to just want to go to the yeah. countryside and have yeah. chickens, raise <laughs> yeah. chickens and... <laughs> cook your own food have your own farm yes. and <laughs> yes and There's be isolated no like, i don't think i'd be isolated but i just feel really really like oh a bit whew, yeah Oh, yeah. yeah, that's true. And I like, mean, Macau is so small and impact, right? Even parking alone, yeah. like finding oh God, a yeah. spot is like the mm. most impossible thing. No. It's, a, it's a nice I'd place like, to remember... visit and hang out for a bit and yeah. not like live there and start live. family there. Yeah. Right? That's how yeah. I feel as well. Like I'm going back to Macau on holiday. I, would not, I do not envy any of my friends that have stayed behind. Mm -hmm. and uh, you know it's they love it it's they, but i i just, my personality and my character i don't think i could i could live there no for sure <laughs> yeah yeah and i guess for you i mean you're like a couple couple years older than us like what was it what was your like hangout spot in macau or what have stuff you said right, oh there's my not god a lot to do is there like some things that you guys do regularly i mean you're from like epm right oh. for most for most of your years <laughs> we used to go to um Lial Snader. they used to like if you go up where you where the body shop used to be i don't know if it's still there now body but shop, there was like shop, a little yeah. a little little tiny shopping mall mall like a tiny tiny oh my god mall. i know what you're talking about <laughs> the one with the ears. I, is I it like a tiny door Oh. Yes, tiny, tiny, tiny shopping mall, and we just used to go there. And obviously, when I was a te when I was a teenager, like between thirteen to fourteen, fifteen, I used to spend so much time there, getting like my ears pierced with like one of those like pi like piercing guns that nobody does anymore. I know where that is. But, yeah, Santa yeah. Singer. Yes, <laughs> Sun Star yeah, I think, City. I think it was Santa Singer. Yes, yeah, Sun Star City. There, no, and there, there was that one, and there was another and then one this as well. A smaller oh, oh. one. Yeah. You're right. The one, the smaller there was a door. Smaller one, but, Sun, oh, but oh. we spent a lot of time in Sun Star City as well. Oh my God, it's that's insane. the only place where you can get a belly piercing. You know, like <laughs> yes. <laughs> also, like, did you have sticker pictures too? Was that a thing back then? Yes, I had <laughs> so many of them. So oh many. I don't. I don't think I've I've kept any of them, unfortunately. But oh my God, like. I don't, it's just so, like, looking back, remembering back, it's like, it's almost embarrassing, but it's, like, so funny. So funny. And the whole, like, process, you go in, take pictures, and it takes, like, you know, like, so fast, right? You have to, like, rush everything, yeah. too, because it's all timed. And then afterwards, you don't even <laughs> stick it anywhere. You put it in the lab, you laminate yeah. it. Like, you laminate Nintendo's cards, remember? <laughs> Oh my god, it's so funny. Oh, mm -hmm. I almost forgot about those sticker pictures, to be fair. <laughs> oh my god, I can't believe we used to do that. I would have to, I, to be fair, I still would do, do it if if I had the chance. I just, now, like, right? Yeah. It, was, it was harder to find. Like now, it doesn't seem as common. Yeah, um, now you can just use yeah, your phone. Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah exactly. <laughs> and they got those fancy printers with your phone and like fancy app. And they're like, yeah, I like that, but. There's something nostalgic about being going into like a little machine with your friends. Yeah. Deciding on which That's machine true. to use. Like, oh, this effect looks style. Nice. And the layout and the pose. And you're like, oh, no, I was doing that pose. No, you didn't. Like, <laughs> no, the people were, like the, the kids don't know the, the, the struggle. <laughs> oh, no. 
they'll never understand and then when you're trying to write something and then it, it times up and you're like written oh my half god. a it's word like, yeah. like, oh my god <laughs> We would like we would like divide oh um, our tasks to each other. Like, all right, you you do this, you you do these photos, you do these. All right, <laughs> it's like okay. or like at the end, divide which pictures, which who gets oh which, God. who gets yeah. what, because the sizes are <laughs> different. <laughs> that's true yeah yeah and then if, if someone had like a bigger one and then you're like oh but i've only got like two of them and then like someone had more and you always get like you get a bit cross but you can't say anything you're just a bit like mm -mm. <laughs> oh true, back yeah. in those that's days guys. Mm -hmm. i haven't been back to macau in seven years so but we were going back this year with rosie for the first oh, time exciting. and i'm so excited to show her off that's to the family <laughs> Oh, oh. this is my baby oh. um yeah, finally so right i bet you they're, they're like you know give us a child give us a child oh my god so <laughs> me and my partner we're not we we live in we live together we we've mm -hmm. been together but we we're not married we're not engaged or anything and my mm -hmm. mom my mom's quite liberal a very liberal chinese woman but uh, elder like elder sister is quite old school, very traditional, and she's the head of the matriarchy of the family. Um, oh. <laughs> so she decided to tell her that we got married and just like signed the papers. There's no pictures or anything because we just signed the papers. But yeah, so because obviously, you know, having yeah. a child out of wedlock, it's it a fun. bad, it's a no no. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Make it fun. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, <laughs> you know. Yeah, that's literally what we were saying earlier. Yeah. It was so funny to say <laughs> pregnant. <laughs> like, <laughs> just big stomach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, big stomach. Like, um, So yeah, so apparently, according to my mom, um, when we go to Macau, we are married. married um, I see. <laughs> that's going to be a funny, funny one. Yeah. I mean, I told my partner, did. like, you have to. Yes. But I would, do you know what? When we do get married, I would love to do like the traditional Chinese wedding. I think the ceremony itself is just it's just a beautiful ceremony. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, well, we'll have to wait maybe wow. another couple is he, years. Is he from the UK? Yes, he's uh, very British. Oh, okay. He's very, he's very white. <laughs> he's got a little very quite low. Yeah, <laughs> he knows. He knows what quite low is now, um, and uh, yeah. He just, I, I don't think he'll ever learn Cantonese only because I feel like it's, it might be a bit too hard for him. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And he probably doesn't have the mental, like, it takes a lot of time to learn a new language. And I don't mm -hmm. think it's, I don't think he, we, well, we don't have a lot of time. Being parents, we don't have a lot of time to do it much. So I don't think he was, he's, he wants to spend the little time he has to oh, yeah. learn a new language, um, which it's not, great but also you know I, me and rosie can talk shit about him and it, that's <laughs> true that's a plus is that's your plus. is your plan to speak cantonese with her yes i so we are so we are doing the, the three languages currently um i'm i'm trying to force my mom so my mom lives with us at the moment because okay. it's great to have her Get help more help with yeah <laughs> Yes, exactly. Um, and she loves Rosie to bits. So I've 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 told my mom you need to mainly speak Cantonese with her because my mm. my my Cantonese is a bit it's fluent but it's rusty because I've been here for what forty six sixteen years yeah yeah for sure. 16, 16 years so um, it gets rusty sometimes. Oh, sometimes yeah. I'm trying to say something and my mom's like, oh, it's not like that. Oh. Like correcting me in Cantonese and I'm like. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm like, Mom, but you understand what I'm saying. Why do you have to correct me? You know what I'm saying. She's like, yeah, but you need to learn. I'm like, mm, do I? <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. I mean, yeah, it's 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 kind of cool, like having this culture. And I I think about like, oh, am I gonna talk to my kids in Cantonese? Like, go and teach them because like, sure. I mean, we're not we're not Chinese at all. So it's like. But yeah. it is a, what a unique language, and it would be a waste yeah. to teach our kids. So, something and like I think that. it's like it's so impressive. For, I, I find it very impressive. Mm -hmm. If I saw, say so myself, when you go to a restaurant, like oh. a good Chinese restaurant, and they're not expecting you to order food yeah. in Cantonese, and you're like, 
誒唔該一個，你你乾腸牛河一個誒誒雞粒誒鹹魚炒飯，嚟食法打，跟住嚟跟住嚟，哇！你識得講中文㗎？ Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah. And even in Chinatown here, like I walk in in a restaurant that looks a little bit more authentic, and I walk in and they were like, I just had all the stares, like. Because I think it's more common in Macau and Hong Kong to have foreigners、yeah. eat in local restaurants, but here in Chinatown maybe it's less、uh, common.、Yeah. So they would just like stare, and they're like, "You do you know where you are? Like, are you in the right place?" And like, "Oh yeah, I was like, do you mean? Do you <laughs>、oh、know this isn't like、yeah, Applebee's、yeah. or whatever?" <laughs> so yeah, that was my first American reference that I could remember. Like, I was like, <laughs> anyway,、Applebee's. yeah. Um, speaking of restaurants, let's talk about your、yes. career.、Um, we always love talking about food, so we're super excited for this. But、um, I guess first, how did you get into、yeah. culinary art and cooking?、Um, well, feeding your husband. It, <laughs> well, actually, wait, wait. This was like, this is like rewind, rewind of a rewind of a rewind. So when you when I moved here. I always, I always loved eating out. My mom always cooked、um, really well, and my dad loved, loved food. Absolutely, like I think I got my love for cooking from my mom and my love for eating from my dad. <laughs> both, best of both. <laughs> yeah, best of both, best of combination. So when I moved here,、um, being a student, not having a lot of money, and then like、oh, you want to, you want to eat, like you, but you can't eat what you used to eat at home because like you, you probably miss like, it a lot too. Yeah, you miss it, but then again, if, if like so, I had, I was like, well, I can either go spend all my money in one eating, like out, eat out, like outing eating,、mm-hmm. um, or I can learn to cook. So that's kind of how it started.、Mm-hmm. So at uni, I would like, in fact, I would not go to classes sometimes, just stay at home all day bunking. And then just watching cook, cooking shows and oh, oh, learning the dedication. Yeah, I know.、Um, and so much so that I got the shittest, shittest mark you could get just to pass <laughs> at university. And I was like, "What?、Well, well, because I did fine art anyway, so it's it's not. Well, I'm gonna get a lot of sh- <laughs> shit for saying this, but it's not a real degree. Fine art is not a real degree. <laughs> I said it. <laughs> <laughs> you can, can say, say it. it yeah. Fun art. Yes.、Um, so after that, I went to do like bar jobs,、um, waitressing, whatever, and then fell into like customer servers. Sorry, customer service,、mm-hmm. and then fraud prevention. And within, oh, I was always working office jobs, but still had well, cr- well, I created a food blog back then, like almost ten years ago.、Mm-hmm. Um, Writing my recipes, showing it was kind of like blogging and Instagram, but Instagram was like a lot of like very mixed. It was very like personal pictures and then food pictures, and, food. and then yeah, like a lot of like people were like, "Why are you posting so much, so many food pictures?"、I'm、like, well, you know, I like it. Yeah.、Um, and then you know when that wave of like food trend caught on. Mm-hmm. On like social media, like posting,、mm-hmm. that's what like I was like, okay, cool. This is like my vibe.、Mm-hmm. Um, but being actually paid to do food only happened about three, four years ago.、Oh. So、um, th- during during COVID,、mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I lost my job during COVID,、oh. and I was a bit like shit. Um, what am I going to do? I need a job. Nobody was employing,、um, so you know, people. A lot of people were, were losing their jobs here.、Yeah. Um, so my mum makes、um, an exo sauce that a lot, of, a lot of my friends love it. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to make it. So from that, I've I've launched. So me and my one one of my friends, Emily,、um, she's. Um, half British, half Malaysian. We've spoken about、oh, starting a hot sauce brand,、mm. and、um, which we called it Two Hot Asians.、Oh. <laughs> <laughs> two of us and two hot sauces.、Mm-hmm. Um, so during COVID, I was like, you know what, fuck it, I'm just gonna launch it. Like, you know, 
yeah. for my living room. So I started pack it, packaging and whatever, my oh, own cool. kitchen, started making sauces. Mm -hmm. Next thing I know, I'm like, one of my friends who's who's got like a ton of followers reposted it and like in one day I had to pack about 200 orders for my oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was insane um and then from there you know COVID like all the restrictions lifted again mm. um my, my partner my business my then business partner Emily joined oh. to to do her sambal um mm. and then we started doing pop-ups so that's like I think that was when the first serious Food, like food related paying job I've, you know for me um that was it and then doing pop-ups um yeah that's how I really got into it and then you know you, you always get jobs in like content and stuff like that to create recipes but I don't really yeah. I like I don't see like content creating is like one thing but then I think working in a kitchen is a complete like mm -hmm. professionally I think it's completely different it's, yeah because it's a it's, totally I don't different think... setting too yeah uh yeah because the thing is like you can record as many as many times as you want like yeah. if you fuck up something the recipe is fine but then if you're doing like a pop-up or something no it's a lot more of customers waiting for yeah it. so much pressure and then if like if you if i'm eating something on video i'm like mm, this is amazing this is so good <laughs> it could be shit but i'm still like oh <laughs> this is so delicious right That's like so true. But then if you're doing it it, it is isn't it like it, the, mm -hmm. the, i don't know you could be doing a burger and it could be like completely raw but you're just like mm, yeah, mm -hmm. it's so That's um, true. but in in pop-up situation like if you fuck up someone's food like yeah. they will let you know yeah, yeah, and sometimes, sometimes, well, not, yeah. <laughs> yeah sometimes it's also a per per like a personal preference so it's like you know you yeah you can't totally like be 100 percent if they're gonna like it yeah. too yeah it's more pressure for sure i know yeah uh, i would like compare it to so, like me cooking you know, like, like with someone in the kitchen i'm just like i, I can't do anything <laughs> when there's someone <laughs> looking at me it is it is quite um daunting when someone's in the kitchen with you and they, or they're watching you kind of like stop watching me like <laughs> yeah. well you just get used to it um yeah mm -hmm. yeah but yeah you can't you can't please everybody you know like if i if if you think about portuguese desserts right they're sweet as like they're sweet sweet yeah. sweet but then you've got yeah. the chinese desserts that are like complete opposite not so sweet yeah, yeah. yeah. so if i was to do something if i was to do an asian dessert and then cater for like portuguese they're like this this needs sugar and then yeah. vice versa you know so yeah hey you can't please everybody this is true. and when you say pop-ups is that kind of like similar to like food trucks in in america because food trucks get really busy um, and like not busy. really so i what we do is like so i or well it, either a restaurant contacts me or i contact a restaurant and then i'm like hey uh i am a proper chef, chef. I, I see that you're you're closed on wednesday or whatever do you mind if i take over your restaurant i, I can give you like 10 percent of the tickets um well it depends we neg negotiate so if they have staff that they can um provide you know i might have to i might have to pay the staff um and then they take drinks i take the ticket sales for the food I do a menu and I'm in charge of selling the tickets. So it depends. Oh, That's the the okay. the normal, the most normal setup, I guess. But there's other yeah. setups as well. There's there's ones that I've done ones that they restaurants have reached out to me and they say, um, I want you to create the menu and I want you to be there on the night, but we've got a whole team, so I'll pay you a fee. So I'll just take mm -hmm. a fee like an X amount of money just to do a menu and be the face essentially. I see. Cool. Interesting. Yeah, yeah that's definitely different from what I pictured because I pictured like <laughs> pop up. So and yeah, that's the main thing. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. So I could literally like, I don't know if I. Well, I do know a few people in America, but I don't think I don't think they would want me because they were oh. like top top. Hey, pop, we'll top, see. Top. Hey guys, um, look. No, but I could mm -hmm. be like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. What the girl? <laughs> um, no, but let's say I would be like you know. 
um, oh, I, I, for example, friends in Portugal, I got a lot of friends in Portugal. I'm doing a few, a, a few things this summer. So I'm just like, Hey guys, I'm in Portugal. Shall we do something? And then we can do a collaboration as well. So we do like a mix of my menu, my dishes and their dishes. So it could be anything. Yeah. Just a very flex. I just have to be very flexible and adaptable to whatever. Yeah. Whatever. To where you're at too, right? Yeah, exactly. Oh yeah. yeah. What is your what is your go to menu or, yeah, your go to menu or the, your favorite menu that you'd like to? Oh yeah. Oof. My, we but, want you to make me, a menu right now. I could. <laughs> okay. Well, actually, um, I literally just posted. Um, so my next supper club, actually, this is, so I've started, so this past Sunday, I did a supper club at home. It was my first time doing it at home because usually I do it outside, but 12 people, 12 crazy people actually paid to come to my house. Ooh, I know, completely that insane. That must feel so yeah, we were, good. Like, why would, they like, were lovely. Buy, they were absolutely yeah. lovely, but I still think, wow, people would have paid to eat my food. <laughs> Like yeah, yeah, I still, yeah, I still I get that. I still get that. It's the, um, that so that went really well. <laughs> oh, yeah, I do. I get all, all the time because I'm. I like. I can't. I. I can never. I don't know. Every time I call myself a chef, I feel like, ooh, maybe I'm. Oh, like, yeah. I can't call myself a chef. I, I call myself a cook, rather than a mm. chef because the chef mm. seems a bit. Like oh. I don't think I deserve it. Yeah. Oh yes. Yeah, so I'm doing so. I've done this one and I've literally just posted about an hour ago. My next one, that's going to be a, on, on the 16th of March. And the menu, let me read it out to you. I know the menu by heart, but give it, give I don't it. want to it. I'm, I'm yeah. hunger to hear all so the names it's... of dishes. <laughs> so I'm going to say in, Portu in Portuguese first mm -hmm. and then in English. So salada de bacalhau e alfureca. So salted cod and jellyfish salad. So that's a mix of like the Portuguese um, salted cod salad and the Chinese jellyfish salad. Oh. So I'm going to marry it together. Wow. Um, and then we've got, um, yes, because I don't know if you know this, but Macanese food is the, well, from what I've read, is the first fusion food yes. in the world. Yes. That's yeah. what so, we learned. It, yeah. Yeah, we're so cool. That's what I mean. And how many uh, how do, uh, chefs out there are even doing macanese? You know what I mean? Like we, earlier you, know you what, were saying, is, oh, people in America well, are not going to notice me. I think they would. I think they would, girl. I mean, it's Eastern Western fusion. It's like crazy. they would love it. I think they love it. But I think because there people don't really know. I feel no. I think the main problem is so mac macanese people. Right, the Macanese aunties, the the ones that have the recipe, they gate kept for so long, gate gate kept for so long yeah. that no, they don't want to share the recipes. And from my experience, from talking to other other people in the industry in Macau, what happens mm. is they will give you an, a recipe. Let's say um, I want a recipe for minchi. Mm -hmm. All right. And then I give you this and you say, okay, yeah, this is the recipe, but there's all like, there's always a couple of ingredients missing. Oh. So they will give you a, a version of a recipe, oh, but it's really? not that. But, <laughs> yeah. Wow. So that's why if you look at, if you try and search online, right. Or you can't find it. Yeah. Like go to like ask people in Macau, whatever their recipes, there's always like the variation is the difference is so big. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like, how I don't know if you do a carbonara it's always like four or five ingredients that's right. it yeah. how one dish can vary so much of, mm. with different ingredients like completely because yeah. some people they went from being this to then missing an ing ingredient or like being replaced by this yeah. and yeah so it's 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 yeah it's 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 hard and people then you know restaurants don't do it because nobody knows how to cook them and and, yeah. and that's why it's dying oh and i and in it's a sense i could kind of see that because like when i'm eating in macau there's some restaurants are known for the this specific dish and they do it so well and that's why like the the restaurants grow and people go there just for that dish yeah. right there are cases yeah. like that for like curry for egg tart for like portuguese tart mm. there's 
it, it, it's true and i guess like i can see like them doing that like gatekeeping this recipe yeah. because then all the other restaurants could do i don't know yeah the, but, but the thing is, these these people that are keeping recipes are like Mac and his families because they're the ones that essentially, like, you know, the, the ones that have... Well, I'm first first generation Mac and his, so my family doesn't have any recipes, right? But I've got friends that come from a long mm-hmm, mm-hmm. line of, like, you know, a Sun Samhain, whatever. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, you know, the big, big names, right? Yeah. And their families have, have been, they've got these little books of, yeah. of recipes that they just keep to their, themselves. And you're just the like, golden, hey, <laughs> if you die, that book is going with you because no, like, none of your kids want to fucking cook, right? Mm-hmm. So they're not interested in passing down the recipes. They're not interested in, in, in sharing the recipes. So all the recipes are going to die. The okay. kizuna is going to die if you don't share. That's sad. That's so sad. You gotta share. I know it's really sad. So continue sharing your I'm menu then, tonight. because because that sounds yeah, like sorry. we gotta yeah we gotta like we gotta share. talk about this. Yes, I know we're gonna share the bakayao salad. So delicious. next one we've got um like macanese cheese toasty. So it, it sounds really simple, but it's like it's kind of it's kind of got this cheese sauce on top, and then it's some some variations have condensed milk, and some variations have sugar, and you kind of brulee it. Um, oh, so that's, that's the, new! I've um, never heard of that. That's so yeah. Sorry. So that's sorry, sorry. well, you, you either call it toasted queijo or uh, cheese toasty. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that's it, and then mm. going on to la casa. Laksa. So it's oh, no, it's not there's not the M- Malaysian laksa. Oh, no, okay. it's a variation of it. So it's the Macanese took that has inspiration and turned it into. It's almost like a um, oh, what is it called in Chinese? And um, the Singapore vermicelli. Oh, almost uh, but not. Singtao chow mai. Yes, that. Um. Sort of, but without the curry, the mm-hmm. the curry element. So instead of curry, curry is with shrimp paste, but the macaroni shrimp paste, belly shell. Yeah, mm. yeah. Um, so you've got a soup version and a dry version. So I'm doing the dry version, and it's usually served with prawns. Um, so yeah, and then I'm gonna do it out. And then I got pork, uh, belly shell tamarind. So um, pork braised in tamarind, and again shrimp paste. That's going to be served with white rice. That fun. My chow toy. Oh, my chow toy. Some young chow toy. Oh, um, my God. Stop. <laughs> um, and then for dessert, we've got serradura. Serradura. <gasps> oh, oh, yeah. Dude, me and my family yeah. will always get serradura for like our birthday cakes, you know, because it's like. Why get anything else, you know? Because that's the best. It's so good. So I was like, I I think I remember. Sorry. One time I was was trying to explain like this dessert, Portuguese dessert from Macau and how much I love it. And they were like, oh, what is it made of? And I was like, oh, it's like, you know, crushed uh, cookies, biscuits and cream. And I I was like, as I was saying, they're like, huh? Like. Okay, that sounds simple enough, but I was like, no, 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 it's really good. Like, it's really good. <laughs> so I guess if you had to explain in a, like a chefy way, you would say it's like a tea biscuit crumble sort of thing with like a creme pat, because essentially is a cre- creme pat is a creme patisserie made with eggs and eggs and milk and stuff, and it gets thick. Is that mixed with condensed milk? Mm. So that that mm. if you have to explain it next time make it and you want to make it sound a bit more like it's yes you made it sound so <laughs> delicious like i have no idea what you yes, said yes. but it's delicious <laughs> it sounds better so than cream and biscuits yeah no yeah, no, yeah. yeah. <laughs> for sure <laughs> you don't want to do that right it's like oh it's toasted oh, with a so blah, blah, blah 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 and it's like is it cheese yeah. it like <laughs> <laughs> yeah no it, No, it's fun. No, Love no, it, it's, it, it sounds a bit. Yeah. I'm sorry for sounding a little bit patronizing sometimes, but like it's so, it's such a like I don't know. I just I'm just used to try having not having to explain. Want to make it sound interesting oh, yeah. to people. It, 
Yeah. yeah. So I'm like, give it the knows, credit she, that it deserves. It, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Because it's not just that. It's like, That's true. you know, more. It's so true. Yeah, and I it's mean, like, it's like so many of like the Asian dishes, you know, that is delicious. But yeah. when you say it like, you know, like pig's blood, you know, I mean, there's a dish in Philippines, yeah. in Uguan, that I love so much. And I, t- I tell it to, to my husband, like, it's uh, it's pig blood. Yeah. yeah. Like the sauce and it's with pork. Uh, and he's like, <laughs> <But it's> not- <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and it's so that's why it's so important to how to like name the food or how yeah. to explain it for people to want to even try it. Right. Yeah, otherwise nobody's wanting to try anything, really. No. If I just said, like, yeah, like, biscuit and cream. <laughs> that's for true. Dessert, that's what you're getting. <laughs> um, <laughs> but the, the menu sounds delicious, and I really want to try. Oh yeah, you got to send us pictures Thank if you. you have any, like, of, like, you know, showing your dish. Yeah. Yes. I will, I will, I will, I will. I've got, actually, I'm, I'm, I'm literally, uh, because I'm, try- I'm trying to also not gatekeep recipes, yeah. Macanese recipes, but I'm trying to be careful in what I share because obviously oh. if I share all of my Macanese recipes, then nobody will want to eat my food. Oh. So I need to be careful. But I'm actually going oh to try God. and start start um, recording some so that people have an idea of what Macanese food is and not just oh. like going by my word um, yeah. so they can just turn in themselves and test uh, taste it. I mean, I think even just for someone who has nothing to do with Chinese or Portuguese culture, just the mm. sound of Eastern, Western fused into a dish, like you oh, could yeah. totally, oh. I don't know. Yeah. It's so good. <laughs> um, I like, I was curious. So, cause sometimes for Macanese food or maybe like Chinese food, like it's very different from like um, the Western, like the basic kind of, uh, food that they eat like that's mm. a good example i don't know like ju pa bao was also a very yeah. weird concept for um my family in law it's like it's like oh yeah it's just bun with pork but they don't usually use pork and in, into like a burger you know burgers always mm. with, like beef or chicken i don't know if you yeah. have any of those where it's like this chinese food might be a bit weird to or even um, eating rice in breakfast they find weird you know, like joke and stuff. I think ice the weirdest. I feel like now is not as weird, but I feel like when, like a few years ago, before food was such a trend, mm. it was a bit like having congee for breakfast right. or having congee right. at all. Like, why are you having soupy rice? Like, mm. you know, but now that food is such a trend and people are open minded, I feel like is not. Is is that people more mm. receptive? Um, so yeah, no, I think I think right now it's a lot easier to. If there was a time to introduce people to new things, I think now is a time because mm. people people are foodies now. I feel like this, yeah. especially like more young more. people. Yeah, and the young people. So back in my days, when we we were in university, all we wanted to do is get pissed every night like go out go, or have a house party or whatever yeah now kids are like oh no like they're 19 20 they're like oh yeah we're gonna go to this fancy restaurant all about self-care like ooh, you know self-care like well i i love self-care but back in the day self-care was like a bottle of cheap vodka you know <laughs> yeah that was self-care <laughs> It was probably still cheaper than self care nowadays. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. No. It was. Yeah. Drinking alcohol. I think. I think drinking alcohol is a lot cheaper than eating out. I'm not saying, guys. I'm not saying drink alcohol, but <laughs> you know. <laughs> right. mm. Wow. Um, Don't do it. Do you have a dish that you're most proud of? Like, I know you mentioned your, your menu, but like outside of that or within that, like what is one dish that you're most proud of? Okay, so <laughs> this is not actually a Macanese dish, but um, so last year um, I was working with this company in London called Delhi. So Delhi, um, what they do is, it's kind of like a platform for small producers small so i don't know bakeries sauce producers whatever so they were doing a, a easter bake sale and um they contacted me 
asking if I want to be part of it. I was like, yeah, sure, I'll I'll do it. I hate bake. Like, and I thought to myself, but I hate baking. I don't like to bake. <laughs> what am I getting myself into? So I started looking into my recipe book. Like, I got loads of recipe books um, from other yeah. chefs, and um, I I don't know. Are you are you familiar with Milk Bar, Momofuku mm -hmm. Milk Bar? The white chocolate. Um, so, so there's, there's a, I don't know if, I don't know how oh, wait, uh, the cookie? nationwide. Yes. Oh the yeah. The cookie brand. And... Yeah. 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 No, I know milk bar. Sorry. Yes. I was thinking about so another white bar chocolate has... thing from Nestle, but yeah, this is. <laughs> so cookie. before milk bar, I think before milk bar came up with their cookies, they, so they had like their, their own shop and doing the cakes and whatever. Mm -hmm. So they've, there's a cookbook, um, from, from them. From Christina Tossi, and she's got a pie called crack pie. Yeah. So it's essentially a ch American chess pie, which mm -hmm. I've never had before. Um, and I was looking through the book, and I was like, "Oh, what can I do? What can I make?" So I saw saw the crack pie, and I was like, "That looks fairly easy to do." And I was like, "Okay, cool. Let me try this, but with a, a different taste, like fillings and stuff." Um, so I did a pandan flavored mm. crack pie with and a strawberry, a strawberry powder on top. Oh my God. So it was a crack pie inspired by a Christina Tossi, but with my own flavors. Yum. And oh and it fucking blew. Like I'm sorry for swearing so much. No, I think it's I don't know if it's an English thing, but um, yeah. So it blew. Uh, yeah, blew people's mind. Like it's like deep, deep green with like bright pinkish powder on top, and people were obsessed with it. Absolutely obsessed. And I think yeah, it's, it was not completely my creation, but it is my creation. So yeah, you added I think I'm pretty touch, proud of that. Yeah, added your touch to it. Yes, exactly. Yeah, and I've had to make many, many. I think the most I've made once was probably 20 pies 20 whole pies yeah whole for an pie. event. damn that's how yeah. high the demand was for your pie Look at that. yeah 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 and that's it's high. insane yeah uh, well it, it, it. You know, that sounds it, amazing that's why they call it crack pie in the book because it's so people were so addicted they were like i need to have it and it's i'm like, like okay, cool yeah, it's right. the good kind. The good kind of. I mean, I guess sugar is addictive, so true. you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I guess before moving moving on to the top three macanese, is there anything else like maybe for someone who doesn't know the macanese cuisine? Is there anything else you want to add or like describe to people? Why What's the first thing they should try? Cuisine? Right, like that. Sure. Yeah. What's the first thing they should I try? Think I think Minchi is so, it's such a, I feel like Minchi is great, but it's not the best Ooh. Macanese dish, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. okay. I don't, I don't know. I don't think, I feel like potentially, oh, I don't know. I don't, you gotta choose. I feel like either, <laughs> either Pogoke oh. or, or, um, Face okay, which is a uh, chicken, um, uh, like uh, Galinga Africana. Yeah. So yeah. either one, like, yeah, one of them between, mm -hmm. I think, I feel like they're very, very good. Minchi is great, don't get me wrong, but it's like, you can imagine what that tastes like because it's, it's stir fried minced meat with mm. cute potatoes, <laughs> rice, fried eggs. You can imagine yeah. that already. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But like, I feel like curry, you can never imagine what a curry tastes like. Right. And I feel like as a first experience, that's pretty great. True. I think, I don't know. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> now you know, now you know what to try. Um, for your your personal uh, preference, what's your top three Cantonese slash Macanese dish? I think first one, go to, go to, go to is Kok Chu Pa Fan. I love, love, love Kok Chu Pa Fan. I think I really, really like, this is not a cuisine, but like, you know, in Haksa, they have these the places with the barbecue. Yeah. 
the yeah. little barbecue skewers. That, oh, that is, I, re, I remember it so, so fondly and being so good. Yes, it's it so good. good. Yeah, with the, the honey so on good. top, the honey, yes. chicken wings. Dude, when I came here to America yes. and like get barbecued, the barbecue here is not, not it. it, it no, they don't even same. use honey. It's not like, oh. no. It's not the same. Do you know what? And I've been trying to recreate it, but it's never the same paste. Mm. Yeah. Doesn't taste the same. I don't know, yeah. but that like yeah, the skew those barbecue skewers in Haksar. Oh. Take me back, please. Take me back. Yeah, if um, you if you can't replicate the recipe, I have no hope because I've been trying to also replicate like food in Macau because no, I miss it. <laughs> I'm like, oh. oh, this doesn't taste the same. I feel I don't know if it's maybe maybe it's the honey. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it's the honey that we we get. I don't know, different honey. I don't know. I, I don't know. I will. Do you know what? I feel, I feel like my trip to Macau this time will be solely, not solely, but it will Maybe. be a lot of research. I'm gonna be oh, watching. Nice. I'm gonna be watching people. Nice, nice, <laughs> nice, 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 nice. Yes. <laughs> Good. Um, and then third dish. Um, I really, really, um, I really adore. Adore, adore, adore. Um, Gong Chao Ngao Ho. Oh. Mm-hmm. Classic. Good choice. I love. Very classic. I lo- especially if, if it's thick, if it, if it lives like a layer of oil in your lips, <laughs> then it's a good one. You know it's a good one. <laughs> it's glistening yeah. in your lips. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If you got a little, like, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Sometimes, some, like, some places don't do it right and there's not enough... Oil? oil not oil i like you <laughs> hard to explain it's not oily enough and it's not like shiny it's not glistening it's not like i don't that's not yeah no nah. <laughs> wow yeah. ah, great choice top oh three God. love it i love it you know like i i would love to cook like all these type of foods in my kitchen like you know and i you can just, i mean yeah i can i can and you being a mom like and a, and a chef like how do you juggle like everything you know because i mean i can barely do my laundry and i'm i'm si- i'm like i don't have kid <laughs> yeah but, well, but I'm, I'm in a very privileged position that my mom's around to help me like i i don't i don't know if it's this is a chinese mom kind of thing but you know when she offered to come and help i was like yes please because yeah. i'm a baby still <laughs> like so like <laughs> if i don't have to do the washing up i won't do it you know um no that's yeah i don't know i feel like i i'm in a position i, I, I did well she's she's been here since the baby was born so mm-hmm. i've never had to know any different well I did, we did for a month and that was hell yeah Aww. she was away for a month actually so it wasn't hell because obviously baby our baby is lovely but it's trying to juggle it for the first time on her on your own is is really difficult and I, I i honestly like single moms out there i give a lot of respect and praise because fucking hell it's like i don't know how a person does it on their yeah. own and like i in that, in that month, I had my partner. Obviously, I have my partner, but he's um, he's self-employed, so he has to work his own hours. Um, so sometimes he's away from eight to eight, and during those days, um, it really tests you, like your mental capacity, like being able to do the same thing every day. It's quite it's very lonely being in motherhood. It can be yeah. very lonely, even though you you have this little baby that's the love of your life it's yeah. it's still very lonely because your most of your friends have different life now um and yeah, yeah so you're like details yeah exactly and then you feel like nobody wants to to know about nobody cares oh. to hear you talk about your baby as much as you want to talk do you know what i mean yeah. um so you kind of feel like oh maybe i should shut up now like oh. i don't want to talk about don't want to talk about Razy anymore because nobody wants to listen. But yeah, that's no, like it's yeah, I'm very lucky. My mum is great and yeah. 
don't have to know what it is to juggle. There has to be like an, a, a group or something of like chefs and moms as well, and just you know. Like yeah, there is, but they're all we're all in like um, at different stages, that's isn't it? True. Like I know oh, a lot of too. moms are chefs, but they're like you know they've got teenagers, so their mm-hmm. their struggles are different. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's not it's good. So I've I've got I do have a few friends that um from from post from a, sorry antenatal group. And they, I, but it's hard to keep up, or keep in touch sometimes because yeah, obviously yeah. everybody's got their life. Mm-hmm. So you just, it, it, it ends up being you and your partner and your close family. So, yeah. but that's, that's fine. It's, it's life. That's like, that's like when I, you know, when I was growing up and people would be like, yeah, you guys are kids like that. You don't understand. You lose friends and you're like, no, I won't. No, then we're going to be friends forever. Well, my best friend is my best friend. We're going to be best friends until we die. Yeah. That's what I thought about it. But nope. Actually, it happens. We as we say this, but my best friend in the whole world, um, her name is Carla. She's also from Macau, Carla. and she moved is she to dark, darker skin than like is she. I don't know yeah, Carla Cotinho. I, I don't you know, know, know Carla, but she's she Carla has a, a sister called Mariana. Anyway. No, <laughs> maybe okay. Well, I'll I'll send you some pictures of them. Um, so Carla, she's my age. We went to actually we went to kindergarten together. Um, so Lush the Silva, and um, so we've known each other since we were three years, four years old, and we are still friends. She lives in London. She lives around like ten minutes, fifteen minutes drive from me. Oh, that's so nice. Um, yeah, so we still hang out. Yeah, that's thirty awesome years of see goals yeah. right there. Yeah, yeah, it's that's great. Really like, we said, you know. Yeah. Joke. One one flight. No, yeah, we're we're a flight <laughs> away. <laughs> Well, so so where where are you guys living at the moment? She's in Florida. I'm in New York. Yeah. So it's so, like ugh, three hours. We're in the same time, time zone. Pick New York. Yeah. New, York? Uh, <laughs> New York. Yes. That's. Where I'm sorry. I've never been to Florida, is. but I mean, it's New hot York down is here. It's where it's at. <laughs> wow. Yeah. All right. So how so about Macau. any um? What? I said, um, so you said it's hot, hot, hot in Florida. I was like, so is Macau. It doesn't oh, mean I want right. to go back there. That is so <laughs> true. Humidity. The last time I was there, the I was like, that humidity you, is no joke. You you shower, and the moment you step out of like <laughs> you step out of the elevator, and then you look at the corridor out of your building, there's still aircon. So you you're like you you in this fake sense of security, right? <laughs> and then you step out of the gates. And it's like, it's you like, yeah. and you're like, oh my god, like, like, did I just get, you know, it's yes. my face is all wet. <laughs> yeah. It's my sister is like, oh, no. like, it's like, oh, it happened. Yeah, have to happen. Have to. 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 <laughs> I think I think you know what you guys should get Tempo to sponsor because I, I love fucking Tempo. I love it. I got Tempos all over the place. How is that? Is it, how is it not blowing up here in America? You can't. I know. <laughs> Do you know what I told? Like I, because sh- my my partner, um, he's got sin- sin- sinuses often. So the first time I introduced him to Temple, he was like, "It's just a tissue. It's just a tissue." And I was like, "No, no, no! It's not just a tissue." He was, <laughs> and I was like, "Try and blow it about ten times. It will still be in one piece." Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, one piece. So nice yeah. on your skin too, like it's soft. No, it's so uh, <laughs> stuffed. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, all right. This so, what great. about? Yeah, this was an amazing interview. It's so so nice to meet you. So nice to get to know you. Do you have any uh, shout outs for future projects? I know you mentioned some earlier, but let's mm-hmm. say it again. You know. All right. Let's start from the beginning. <laughs> well, so I've got my. <laughs> I've got my. Suffer Club at home on the 16th of March and then at the end of the uh, the last Friday of March I'm doing I'm going on a little tour to Margate which if you don't know Margate is a seaside town in the UK it's about an hour from from London is it's where all the hip people have moved Aww. to now uh, because 
London is very expensive. I and mean, you're kind of like, oh, we want the sea, you know, we want London, but the sea, so you would move right. to Margate. Uh -huh. um, so we're doing there. And then I've got another one coming up in May. So I've got a lot of projects co uh, coming up. But um, yeah, the best way is just to stay tuned to my posts, I guess. Find yes. you on Instagram? <laughs> Find me on Insta oh, Instagram. Yeah. Underscore, yes. lots, sorry, lo yeah. at underscore lots of butter. Yes. Well, tag her. And if you're in the UK and want to try Macanese dish, follow her. And you know, you gotta catch her where she is so you can try her yes. fusion dishes. They all sound Another so thing good. I wanted to mention I'm going to try and well, I'm not going to try, I'm starting to write a, a Macanese cookbook. So, yes, I am going to. I've actually emailed Ma Ma uh, the Macau Tourism Board, they haven't responded to me back, but I will email them again. <laughs> I really hope you get you get it you get yes, their support. Yes, please I hope I do. It too. We need Macanese food uh -oh. to blow up. All right, I first know, fusion right? feud out there. Come on, people! I know. <laughs> I mean, you've got all these people doing like I don't know Peruvian, Jap Japanese, thinking like, oh yeah, we're Nika food. We're the we're the first ones. No, you are not. Macanese <laughs> food is first fusion. Yeah. Exactly. <sighs> And no, I didn't say mac and cheese. I said mac and cheese. Oh, yes. <laughs> or oh, my cow. I'm not from my cow, okay? <laughs> or Moscow. <laughs> or Moscow, yes. Oh. But yeah, it was so lovely to speak to you guys. Honestly, you are so cool. Yeah, like, all the best with your projects. I really want to, like, see you. Anna, oh. like, you know, like, oh. Well, I'm maybe, you know, maybe we'll meet you in Macau one day. Oh. Yes. Maybe. Maybe we'll be behind like a big, you know, big, big, big advertisement for like Macau, sponsored by Macau Tourism Board. And we're like, we're actually the faces in it. Yeah! <laughs> the dream! Oh, yes. hey, Get us no. here! Or maybe we could do like, um, make it, maybe we could do a live podcast one day where you uh, you talk for the for your for your audience and I cook for the audience. Oh my God. Imagine that. But I would be so jealous. I want to just be there and eat because it's not fair for you to cook and we can't try yeah, it. You like, guys have pause, pause. Doing the podcast. True. <laughs> yes, <laughs> while there, she, you know oh what? God, she will yeah. be cooking and we will like be the ones, you know, like the, the, those hosts that just talks and the, while, the sh <laughs> while the chef cooks and then like they try. Oh my oh, God, this is it. amazing. <laughs> but you need to do the ASMR and do like that, <laughs> you know? <laughs> We got a, got a mic for for that. <laughs> got to write this all down. These are all our future. Uh, stay tuned, people. Stay tuned. Huh?